What is up, everyone? Good morning. Uh, just hitting kind of an impromptu. Sorry, let me get my camera. Boop, boop. There we go. Okay. Just going to get a little pre-market prep here for you guys on YouTube this morning. Um, and do a little bit of live trading, possibly. But we don't have too much time, so we're going to get straight into it. So we've got a uh, theme of the morning has been bottom bouncer so far. Um, I was long AGRI overnight from like 11 cents. Um, hit that real fast. You can see kind of bottomed. This has been the theme lately, y'all. If you look at like Axla, 10 to a buck 60. Um, even if you look at CGC, ACB, some of these bottom bouncers, granted these have a little bit of macro behind them in the weed sector at the moment. Um, I'm also long the first green day yesterday on CGC. I've got 10,000 from buck 16. Not the best average, not the worst average. Um, let's see here. One second. But that's been somewhat the theme. Not somewhat, big time the theme. If you look at your axlas, your NVOSs lately, the biggest percent gainers, huge moves, you know, eight cents to 54 cents. These are big percent gains, y'all. So um, when these are in play, I don't think there are much better stocks on the market to grow small accounts. Now, they can be kind of sketch as well, obviously. Well, they're very sketch, and there's a very specific reason these stocks are doing this right now, um, which if you're one of my students, we went over this yesterday in detail going through how to find the ones uh, that are going to do this or at least have the potential so as long agri got a little after hours pop yesterday um, but it was on my radar for a while now so i ended up getting ninety thousand in the 0 0.105 107 range it just rounds up to 11 here um and i took off actually two-thirds this morning already so I'm only down to a third of my position. The idea here is not to be greedy on these things, guys. Um, sorry, one second. <clears throat> the idea is not to be greedy on these things, but that you can get 70, 80, 90, 100%, 200% gains overnight sometimes just by putting yourself in the right places. We'll talk about this more as the market, uh, as we get into the market open. Since we're so close to the market open, we're actually just going to do some live trading for you guys this morning before we head back to the Wolfpack Discord uh, to just be with my students. Let's see here. If you're down for that idea, you want me to do some live trading, smack that, smack that like button for me. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to ask questions. I got the chat up here. Okay, okay. So these were my cells already on AGRI earlier this morning. Uh, so we've locked in 3,600 so far, you know, and it's a perfect little low stress trade for me. You can see if we get back to the scan quickly, we're talking like all the top percent gainers this morning. LIFW is another. I didn't hit that one yesterday, about six to 15 cents this morning. Now 10 cents. Um, what else did I have on the scan? CNXA. Went 11 to 15, but straight back to 11, right? So it's not so much about looking for stocks that are going like 10 to a buck for me, 10 cents to a dollar, but that I can get 100% gains from 10 cents to 20 cents. That's generally speaking the idea. And what I'm looking for kind of going forward into the end of the year, if these continue, which I'm not sure they're going to, but I hope they do. I'm looking to play these I'm somewhat loading these things, but I'm looking for overnights where I can sell into gap ups. And then I am trying to not be greedy. I'm looking to possibly buy lows or buy breakouts or both. When we see these things with big volume set up for multi-day moves. So that's the game for me right now on these bottom bouncers, CNXA is another, but you have to also understand a lot of these are super dilutive. For those who don't know what that means, it means they dump shares. Okay, they're going to dump shares. That's why they're trading at 10 cents. That's why they trade sub 10 cents. But to stay listed, 
to keep compliance with NASDAQ, not only do they eventually have to get back over a dollar by doing a split, but they also have to hold 10 cents. Okay. That's also one of the, one of the rules for NASDAQ. So when we, when I'm seeing these things get down below 10, nine, eight, you know, I've been, I've been watching them recently. Okay. Let's see here. We'll kind of see how AGRI acts. Market's open right now. It's my only overnight in terms of, in terms of, um, not weed stocks. I got the chat too. If y'all have any questions at any point, holler at me. Just sold another 5,000 shares. Um, just into this little morning bounce for now. I'm down to 25,155 on AGRI. LIFW little morning spike here out the gate. That was the strongest move this morning, but did somewhat extend itself. Um, again, if I'm not long prior to these gap ups, for the most part, you know, I do exercise caution. But on the, in this case, that 10 cent level, like I said, can be key. Uh, Eight to 10 cents. I'll be kind of eyeing on LIFW today, but I would have rather had somewhat of a position like AGRI, um, which I just took another 5,000 shares off. I'm down to 20,000 shares there. Um, wanted to see 15 hold. 14 is ultimately going to be the risk on the rest of my shares here. For AGRI, something like that. And that's the whole point of not being greedy. I woke up this morning, I sold it into 18, 19 cents, 18 cents. Two thirds of my position, just in case. I don't want to be greedy. The whole point is when this moves eight, nine, 10 cents, I'm up 100%. I'm up 70, 80, 90, 100%. When it drops five, six, seven cents, I'm then that retracement is also big. I hope that makes sense to y'all. All right. CGC weed sector is acting pretty much how I wanted it to act today and throughout the week because I missed this move. I didn't want to chase it. I didn't chase it. I missed the breakout. I missed all of that stuff. So I wanted to wait for a few consolidation days or red days, which we got. And then I took a position yesterday. Struggling with a buck fifty for now, which isn't surprising to me. Sorry, I'm not looking at questions at the moment. I'm just trying to make sure I have all my bearings. The game for me is always 
anyways to let things shake for 5, 10, 15 minutes or longer at times. That's usually the game for me. So unless I have very specific levels I'm working off of and using with super high conviction, then I really don't care all too much. Andy said, Jack is short CGC, be careful. I literally don't give a shit. Zero shits I give about what anyone else is doing. And I'm not long from a buck 50. I'm long from towards a buck. Big difference. And you shouldn't give a shit what other people are doing either, you guys. You guys got to get away from that, thinking that what other people are doing, that leads you to make a decision. It should not. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Trade your own ideas. Don't let other people scare you out of your ideas. Unless you're just losing all the time and you're shit. And you're, or you're new. It's, that happens. You know, it sucks for a while. Right, I locked a fifth of my CGC uh, just to lock, just to make sure I'm not being too greedy. I'm still looking for buck 90s at some point, and it, they may not come, but I'm okay with that on CGC. I had it was a really really big move, and I'm not the biggest believer in the sector at the moment. If I was a bigger believer, I'd have more shares and I would have been long earlier and swinging with much more conviction at the moment. Down to 8,000 shares there. Took off another 5,000 for now. I don't like taking off into weakness, but I'm not going to let this go all the way right on me. I actually did want 14 on AGRI, but I'm now down to 15,000 shares. So I'm down to a very, very small portion of my position. And most of it was maximized, so I'm happy. Very happy with the overnight there. How you guys doing in pack? Y'all make any any good money on any of these? Right. Low a day. Point one three six one. Oh yeah, what's up, boob? I'm super live, babe. Little gap and crap reversal on AGRI for now. Again, this 14 level, although it's pre, it is post market, pre market. I take it with a grain of salt. Um, there's still levels. Okay, losing touch, losing touch. Sometimes I'll get sucked in. I got to make sure I'm keeping eyes across the board. LAFW holding up for now. 
AGRI, really nice bounce there. I'm glad I didn't just panic out. And again, if I weren't long overnight, would I be looking at these? Yeah. And what is the pattern I'd be looking at? Pretty much this, bounce back to high a day, uh, about back to VWAP, back towards pre-market highs or something like that is the idea. Lately, it's not been the most fruitful. When these things fade out the gate, they've turned into all morning fades 99% of the time at the moment. Nice reversal on AGRI, back to high a day. Gotta love that. Just took a few more off into high a day, which is what I would be doing if I were dip buying it this morning, but I didn't. I'm long from 11 instead. A little slap there. Just trying to get a few more off into highs. Wasn't able to at the moment. I don't trust these very much, to be honest. For now, like I said, if I'm hitting these overnights, I'm getting good overnight trades. The last thing I want to do is give a bunch of it back. What I want to do is hopefully these things then set up for me to hit them again, right? Down to 11,000 shares there, a tenth of my position, essentially, a ninth, I'm sorry. Keep eyes, okay. And look, LIFW, we'll see if anything's, any of these actually can get going again. But when these things generally go 10 to 20, there are people loading these guys. There are people loading these things who understand these concepts at the moment. So just exercise a bit of caution is all. Oh, I filled, a, yeah, I filled those shares. All right, of AGRI. CGC back to high a day. Build another 500 shares through high a day, sell. So now I'm down to 7,500 shares. I am not looking at questions y'all right now. I'm sorry, I'm just trading. There's a lot of stuff going on. KXN fresh reverse split this morning think yep share consolidation one for 15 so their new float's going to be just under 10 million it looks like something like that if my math is correct hey gri back to 16 cgc and hods There are levels to this shit. Correct, Simon. Took off another 500 into these NHODs on CGC. Just not being greedy, enjoying my morning, stress-free trading, no bullshit. Emotionless, take profits, right? Took a few more of my AGRIs off. I 
down to 9,000 ish. CGC is through yesterday's high now. AGRI fat old pull. And that's why you lock in, my friends. Off of high of day. That's why I say we don't buy through high of day. We don't buy into high of day. We don't buy into pre-market highs. We don't buy through pre-market highs for the most part. They are all levels in which to sell at. So when I get my overnights to market open and it gap and crap reverses, I remember that I still am going to sell into those levels. Be more off. Down to 7K there. Can be really patient now. Um, it's a tiny, tiny, tiny position at this point. People dog on these stocks, man, but when they're in play, they're the best. And, I, and I'm and i not always playing 10 cent stocks or 8 cent stocks, 15 cent stocks. If it's $10 stocks, I'm playing $10 stocks. I go where the volatility goes. And I'm going to find the best opportunities within that. So there are patterns. These things move in cycles. Sometimes it's 10 cent stocks I'm playing for weeks or months. Sometimes it's $10 stocks. Like I said, $5 stocks. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm not a huge fan of large cap because you get bigger floats for the most part. Um, bigger players. But I understand this game, right? Yeah, if any of you, I mean, I do this every single day for my, my students. There's no messing around, man. I've been teaching all day, every day. It's my whole life right now. That and my family. I don't take vacations, really. I'm here. You know, I don't have much of a life outside of trading and teaching right now. And that's how I like it. I do one-on-one -on -one work with my students. I'm getting to know every single one of them. Because just like any other, anything I've ever done, you know, when I played soccer at a high level, yeah, I trained with my team five days a week. But I also trained on my own five days a week with multiple different personal trainers. That is why I got better than everyone in my state at the time. So I've been taking that mentality into my mentoring these days, and it's making a massive difference because I get to know each student. I get to know what the hell is going on with them, what drives them, what their why is, you know, what, the, what their emotional issues are, all that good stuff. And it's been, it's been magical, man. The PACs, uh, I don't know if any PAC members, yeah, there's a bunch of us in here probably. Holler if you're in PAC, let me know. Which, what the experience has been for you guys. Because I've been seeing magic lately. I molded it to be the antithesis of every other chat room out there, essentially. A place where people support each other, care about each other, help each other, and then most importantly, get 100% access to their mentor. A real mentor, in other words. Not someone who's just... You're, you just show up and watch their little video lesson every day or... And then they're gone for the rest of the week or for the day. That's not that's not what I do. And I'm all out of AGRI for now. I just slapped it off there into that low a day. Maybe I'm getting stopped out. Maybe. But I don't care. You know, I'm not. And here's the whole point of how I size out. And if we look, if you look, um, if you look at the p and I'm not taking the 100% of the move on 100% of the shares, okay? Um, I'm taking varying amounts from varying shares, but at least I took off two-thirds of it near the top. You know, I got about 25, I got about a third of it out, almost dead top this morning. Some of it a few pennies lower, some of it a few pennies lower. But at the end of the day, I sold some up there. If I had all 90,000 shares and I had it from 11 cents and I watched it go to 20 and now it's back at 14, I'm giving up massive, massive percentage gains, guys. Especially with the bottom bouncers. At least that's what you have to understand here. So AGRI is done for me. 
Uh, CGC rejection through those highs again. They got rejected for now. Okay. See ACB, what that one's doing. Same, moving in sympathy, pretty much. One second, my son's making a lot of noise. If you guys are enjoying the live stream this morning, make sure to smash that like, make sure to subscribe. Wasn't going to do it today, but decided let's jump on and help you guys live with some patterns. So I called this a bottom bottom bouncer. It's a pattern I noticed back in 2017. Um, started tracking them back then, 2018, 2019. It's a pattern that went away in 2020, 2021, because the markets were so inflated, we had no stocks trading sub a dollar. At one point in 2021, we had no sub dollar stocks, okay? So this pattern went away. 2022's market brought it back to me. And it's been my most fruitful pattern this year. I've had 500% gains, 400% gains overnight on some of these stocks um, earlier in the year. Um, and there's just nothing better. People think you need a lot of money to make a lot of money. But when these stocks are particularly moving, you don't. And small cap in general. And people all say it's a scam, and it is. But when you know the scam, when you understand the scam, it becomes a different story. You can be part of it, in other words. You can take advantage of understanding what's going on. Um, now, CGC is a weed stock. We'll see what this thing's going to do or not do today. I've already locked some in. I feel good. Cover up, Jackie boy. <laughs> uh I'm just kidding. He probably added. Um, let's see here. So your LIFWs. All right. These stocks that are getting really, really beaten up this year in the midst of essentially somewhat of a bull market this year. Um, going back to October of last year, if you look at what we've done. Pretty bullish all year, right? Um, choppy, but bullish when all is said and done. And in the midst of that, okay, in the midst of that, we've got a crap ton of stocks that are going back sub 10 cents. Then they pop, then they reverse split. Okay, so that is generally speaking, not their plan, you guys. Like Axla, okay? Look, it is not their plan to get over a dollar and then hold it and maintain compliance. That is not the plan of these stocks, okay? The plan of these stocks is to pump and dump, do a reverse split. That's the plan. These stocks that fade, 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 they do splits and fade, 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 fade. The reason that is happening because a lot of these stocks have been doing death spiral financing again, a lot of them. Convertible notes where they are able to convert a shit ton of shares at a discount to VWAP. And because of that, they are able, it is actually a conflict of interest because it behooves them to move the stock lower where they can get more and more and more shares. Millions and millions and millions, the lower it goes and they're always getting a discount to market price. I hope that makes sense to some of you. To some of you, it's gonna be sp like Spanglish or Spanish or whatever. You'll have no clue what that means, which is okay. Um, so your AGRIs, okay. All of these stocks that have getting really, really, really beaten up. That's what's going on. And I will you quickly if you guys would like by the way um always zoom out 
So when you go to AGRI, you can see these gap ups and spikes and pulls, okay? It reacts very similar when it gaps up on volume almost every time, at least recently, okay? So when I was looking at this yesterday after hours and grabbing it at 11 cents here, this ultimately was my target, like 20 cents, which we got to pre-market. That was the goal for me, which is why I was taking it off pre-market. I want to see it hit 20 cents today. It did. This one doesn't really like to do much else, but we've seen some of these other ones go on multi-days. I'm not sure AGRI is going to be one of those. Um, same with LIFW. These ones that go down to like five cents, generally speaking, and the floats start to get really big, just can't move as well. EBET comes to mind. There's another one. Um, three, four cent stock or whatever. It's not to say it can't move 100% to eight cents. If you remember that four cents is 100% there. Um, but not ideal. It's like 300 million in the float or something like that. Mm -mm. Sorry, y'all, just doing something quickly. All right, all right. CGC uh, stopped half of my position through low of day. Probably should have taken off more into high a day. Oops. But not a big deal. Pretty decent morning so far. Um, what chart are we on here? No. Again. I can't tell you how many times you guys don't buy high a days. Don't buy through high a days. Don't buy through pre-market highs for the most part. They're just crappy areas, especially when we get the algorithms running, which are, they run on the big volume stocks for the most part. I can tell you looking at my scan right now, it's kind of a shift this week, but lower volume on my scan this morning considerably lower cgc would be the biggest that one in iova iova big stock arm and iova okay ixn split x Mm. Okay, decent little Friday. Decent little Friday. Questions, y'all? 
I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna open it up to questions for you guys now. I'm a bit disengaged at the moment. I'm wondering if they're going to trap CGC to the lows too and, and move it back up or not, which is why I have a few shares left. Anyways, I hope y'all are enjoying. I just want to get I just want to get some of you newer traders away from a lot of the crap that's out there. That's all. It's really bad right now. What platform do I use for scanning? I'm using scans. It's at the bottom. It should be in the description, hopefully. I've used them literally forever and have had zero issues. I can't trade without them, actually, to be honest. I mean, I could, but it's my favorite to by far. Okay. Sorry, y'all. Mm -mm. little low holds all right let's get to some questions y'all let's get to some of your questions so if it hit lows would i reload what cgc Do I get into my entire position at once or do I add on confirmation or go in half and on a dip and have a stop in mind? Depends. It depends. There are some trades that I'm sizing in to levels because I don't want to, and it depends on the size I'm trying to get to. If I'm trying to get a lot of size at times, I will be sizing in 500 shares at a time, 1,000 shares at a time, pretty much accumulating shares as opposed to like smacking it with a big position. Um, there are going to be times where I'm doing one in. But the one thing I'm universally trying to do is size out and scale out. I, I'll sell 10, 20 times if I have to. Um, I'll scale in as well, but it's usually less. It's usually less because I want to keep it controlled. I want to get that number right, my risk right. And if I'm just buying too many shares at random places or something like that, it can get out of hand. So I just want to make sure whatever I'm doing, that the entry is very controlled and that the exits are frequent into the levels that I want to sell into. And I'm not holding uh, for no reason.
How do you get a wolf pack hat? They're not for sale yet, man. But soon, soon that we're going to have them up on the site. Uh, all the merch that you've been seeing. You're welcome, Macy. No problem. A1 made a move? Yeah, it sure did. Look at that. Back to high a day. And that is a pretty damn perfect gap and crap reversal type looking chart to me. Dad, What's up, love? Chocolate milk. Yes, you can actually. Don't drink too much though, okay? Okay. Okay, don't spill either. Love you, bud. Um such a good kid. Okay. That being said, that trade would be done for me too for now. Really nice move. Those who are joining me, the idea, if you can't figure anything else out from this, and if you never join the pack and you never get mentorship from me, that's cool. Um, if you can figure out how to sell into VWAP, high of day, and pre-market highs as a rule of thumb on a daily basis, you're going to be better off than 90% of these fucks who just buy high of day. And I was one of those fucks for a long time, getting fucked, being a fuck at fucky levels, okay? That was me, man, for a long time. Beat my head up against the wall till I realized, you know what? I got to figure something different out. And the main realization was trading tickers when I realized my bot, I'm just buying where good shorts are shorting. And those good shorts make money in those areas and I lose money. And when I cover, when they, when I am going to finally like capitulate down here and sell, guess who I'm selling it to? I'm selling it to shorts who are covering profitably. So you got to get into the right frame of mind, have the right perspective, and then give yourself a new set of setups and strategies, man. That being said, breakouts have been, though few and far between, pretty damn awesome lately, especially on these, okay? So all these tickers that you see right now, all right, to give you an idea, AWIN, I don't know about LIFW, but AWIN certainly setting up see the volume there it's only six million dollar volume is my issue um, a win but if y'all want the juice on what's going on here Really, what we have to do is, um, is this, sorry, wrong one. Where are you? There you are. All right. This is not the most fun thing to do y'all, but it's, it's pretty damn important. So we're going to do it anyways. And... Sorry, y'all. I just want to make sure that we got to... Uh... What the hell? Mm -hmm. My bad, y'all. There we go. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so let's do this real fast. Here's the lesson for right now. AGRI, okay? AGRI. High overall risk, overhead supply high, historical high, offering ability medium, cash need is high, all right? This is the chart. It shows the shares outstanding and then what it looks like diluted. And you can see they're diluting a huge portion of their float, okay? They've got pre-funded warrants issued in merger. 4.8 outstanding with an exercise price of a penny. 12 cent exercise on 4.1 million shares here with full ratchet protection. Which means that if they do another round, another offering lower than their price, their conversion prices, their exercise prices also get reduced, right? Let's see if they've got convertibles. They do. 108 million shares to be converted at a conversion price of 12 cents full ratchet as well in an ATM. So that's what's going on. They're pretty damn dilutive at all these lower prices on LIFW. And I'd probably have to look into, oop, there is a price protection clause, I guess of 45 cents on the convertible notes. So that's something where I'd have to probably go look at the actual prospectus, check check it out, see exactly what the language is. So that's that one. Let's look at a couple of the other ones that are on the list right now. Actually, let's look at like, so Axla, that is not one of the ones that I was thinking of. I believe NVOS is. You can see what's happened to their float over the lot since 1231. 331, it went up to 144 mil. And then another 20 mil on top of that. S1 offering. 50 cent warrants, 4 million outstanding. 335, 2.6 million outstanding. 25 cent convertible note, not registered yet. 50 cent, 25 cent convertible note, not registered. Let's hit some of these from today just to see LIFW. Not too bad, it looks like, but warrants, SPAC warrants. October 22, issued to reduce 63 million in debt. Get back into a few tickers real quick. Hold on. Okay. So we'll see what these things do. Like I said, they're garbage. Most of them are super dilutive. They're going to go back to where they came from. They're going to split. Okay. But some of them I will continue to keep eyes on. Um, for moves such like Axla, which is another great example. Some people think, okay, they got over a buck. They don't even have to split anymore. And they're not going to split. Nah, they're still doing a split, and it's scheduled for the 19th, okay? The rest of my scan, not much to write home about, y'all. Um, CGC is honestly doing exactly what I would want this to do going into next week if it's going to set up for a breakout next week. And if the sector is going to continue to be strong. Um, I don't trust the sector, like I said. But I've already hit the first green day bounce overnight. I've only got a fifth of my position left. I've locked in the rest of my shares on AGRI. That position's done. Um, like I said, four fifths of my CGC. So it's a decent little Friday. 6,700 or so. Stanford, yeah, we trade small cap, mid cap. Some people trade options. Still have some people who like to dabble in crypto, man. I don't care what you guys trade, personally. I think trading is trading is trading, personally. 
of course the markets are different the nuances and you know all the different things about the markets are different but the actual trading and the psychology of trading does not change across across any instrument or market in my opinion it's human nature human psychology that does not change if you are buying and selling products or any sort of asset or any sort of instrument that trades on an open market there is going to be the same emotion because we are all wired the same for the most part it does not change that's my experience No, um, no, my, I mean, someone asked about Forex too. I don't, um, so my opinions, there are good Forex traders out there, no doubt. I think as a whole, and I, and this, I'm talking about the entire industry right now. I'm not talking about just Forex, but FinTwit, the financial mentor gurus and stuff like that is the one of the worst places in the world in my opinion blood sucking lying thieves that's how i feel um in general and you kind of have to sift through it to find the couple people that aren't that it's tough to do too And it's been that way. Nothing's changed. Only the fact that there are more traders since 2020 happened. Prior to that, all the scams you see today, all the Forex scams, which, dude, Forex back in the day when I started trading, it right now, Forex is blowing the fuck up. It's been, okay, for like a year. Forex and futures. And I know why they're blowing up. First of all, they're, they are more difficult to trade. They're more intensive, capi capital intensive. Um... There's less regulation and all that good shit. So very easy to manipulate from a social media perspective and from an influencer perspective. The whole game there is pushing funded accounts. That's the game. That's how those influencers make, I guarantee you, about 99% of their money. That's the game. And it's a huge, huge conflict of interest, man, in my opinion. I mean, any of those, any of those funded sites or whatever. Um, I'm sure there are some that are good, but all the offshore, you know, ones, and they have like one influencer who's at the top of it and apparently an amazing trader. And, but then they own a fund and then some of them are in bed with the brokerage that they use to. And the whole game with the funded account to me is such a joke, man. You know, they're preying on people not having capital telling them that they need the capital but they can't make it without the capital you know or you don't need to save money and use your own money you can use our money right but then if you want to join it's like if you want to join and you want to do it you got to pay them like however much money to take a challenge to paper fucking trade okay to paper trade and then if you pass like whatever then they you get to use their money but it's a huge huge conflict of interest because they fund the traders who make money with the funds who don't make money it's fucking wild in other words it behooves them to have everyone who's signing up and taking these challenges and even the ones who get funded to fail and if anyone knows anything about what goes on in Forex, which I follow all the markets, all the different instruments very carefully on social media these days. I never used to because I just, it made me sick to watch all this shit. But now I watch it. And um, yeah, I mean, here's an example. We'll go to... So here's one of the popular ones. Here's their packages. Choose the counter that works for you. Profit share up to 90%, but you pay extra. 
Profit target 10%, daily loss limit 5%. Max trailing drawdown 8%. New, hold and trade through the weekend, pay them more. New, no new max lots, pay them more. Um, you want a million dollar account? The audition fee, $6,500. You know what I could do with $6,500 in small cap in a month? I could get right over PDT. I could get easily, you know, to some of these numbers. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, but then on top of that, it came out. I don't know those who know, um, but MFF, they're one of the big funding, one of the biggest of these companies that does the funding. They just got busted recently for basically being a Ponzi scheme, which is what I've been saying the whole time. You know, people lose and you take that money and give it to the people that, that are winning, which are very few and far between. It's it's brilliant. I mean, it's brilliant. 90% of traders fail. So why not just give us your money? Take this audition. You can't even do it with paper money. And then if you make it with your paper money and you get your account, they're banking that. Guess what? You're going to draw down anyways and lose that account because you get the million. But then if you get that, you hit that max drawdown, they take it from you. Right? Because they don't want traders to have with a million dollars of their money that they, they only put up $8,500 for. Look, standard profit share of 75% can be increased, but you have to add on a purchase. Standard leverage of 10 to 1 can be increased to 20 to 1 um, with an add-on purchase. You know, it's wild. To me, it's wild, that whole thing. And it's just a big conflict of interest. So that's my whole thing with Forex is that everyone's pushing and futures at this moment. All the pe dude, and I've seen all the stock, a lot of stock traders, man, who used to trade stocks like three, four years ago prior to the pandemic and through 20 and 2021. Those guys couldn't trade in 2022, a lot of those people. And then they, a lot of the influencers at least switched to places where they can push funded accounts. That's been what I've seen as a trend, which is fine, man, to each their own, you know, content creator wise, but I'm not a fan. I'm not a big fan of it. All right, one more peek, one more peek at what's going on here. I'll see how these kind of set up going into next week now. A wins doing pretty good volume. I could see this possibly being one of these multi days. Um, so I'll kind of see how this tracks. If one of these gaps or something, I'm looking to leave them alone and let them pull back and form multi day breakouts similar to Axla. So when these things have big first green days on big volume, I'm watching them. That being said, like LIFW, yeah, that's big volume. It's not huge, but A win's not huge volume either. I'm talking about these massive volume runners. Decent volume here. So I'll kind of track those going into next week, but understand they're going to dump and a lot of them are going to split. That's another great thing about, uh, about uh, DT, by the way. I use that for splits as well. If you go here, reverse splits, it'll show you everything where they've approved them. Look at this. Axla, CNXA, okay, which is in play today. CNXA, which, you know, was in play, but they're definitely doing a split. We know this. Um... You can go down here. Look at all these splits coming, man. All of these tickers. That's what I'm saying. We've been in like a weird bull market, but all these tickers are going under a buck and they all need to split. These are upcoming splits. These are the ones that are just complete. ASTR just did one. AVGR, DNTH, AMPE, um, ASTY. We work, obviously. I missed this reverse split pump, unfortunately. They didn't even pump it, have to pump it, but I missed the base and the swing on this. Phenomenal move. This one, there's their split, four days of fade. Beautiful reverse split pump on WeWork. So yeah, I, I, I like DT a lot. What time is it? We're an hour into market open. That's just about it for me. Um, especially on a Friday. Perfect Friday morning.
Okay. Futures, I know some really good futures traders. I I personally find futures to be a little bit uh a little bit more viable in terms of some of the legitimacy of some of the traders there. But it doesn't matter, dude. It doesn't really matter. Stocks, Forex, crypto, futures, options. 99% of the people are fake and sketch as fuck these days, especially. And the problem is, if you're a new trader, if you don't know anything, you just don't know anything, man. But if you're any trader, who, if you're a trader who's been around for any amount of time and and has put in work and understands how markets work and how trading works across all instruments, it's very easy for the most part for me to watch someone and say they really don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Or, hey, that is straight. They are straight reading a chat GBT script right now. You know? It's all good. Okay, questions, and then we're going to wrap this money up. These people, you know, and here's a, just one more rant. I'm just ranting right now, all guys. But these people, man, they're like, with the challenges and funded accounts, man, some of them, they're like, it took me 10, 10 tries. I blew 10 funded accounts. And 10, I'm like, what the fuck, man? You know? But then you realize, if you look at um, what happened with with, uh, let me see, one second. Let me get you to. So the company was called My Forex Funds. Um, You'll see about it. If you if you just look up my Forex friends Ponzi, you'll see what's going on. But basically, um, regulators in the US and, and in Canada are accusing them of being a Ponzi scheme. And not only that, manipulating, dude, straight manipulating the spreads, putting their traders at a disadvantage, giving them slippage, straight up, it's fucked up, dude. And they were one of the biggest. So you can't tell me that they were not the model of every other fund out there. That's how I feel about that. I, d I look at the, these funded, these funds and so 310 million they made in like two years, dude. And they, and I promise you the game is not make good traders, maybe a couple of them so they can prove that they have a couple of them that who actually have made it and get money back from them. But that's the game. Look, we gave this guy money. We gave this guy got paid out this much. This guy paid out this much. So what's the risk there? Well, imagine if you were a person who got funded and then built your account and weren't getting payouts from them, just building your account. Well, all those funds are frozen and shit. So anyways, enough about that. Let's get back to relevant shit. I've just been getting a lot of questions lately about it. People have been asking me all the time and... What does this line P on CGC mean? That's my position. That's just my position. And I don't trade my P&L. So I don't look, I, I don't really peek at that, really. I don't care what the P&L number is. It's just a line for me so I can know where my position is. Okay. Questions. What's up, Slater? I remember you, brother. Good to see you again. Dude, whatever, man. Like the to me, these funded this funded thing, these funded account pushers are worse than Zach Morris, in my opinion. They didn't make that much money, Zach Morris and those cats. These guys who are doing the funds are making tens of twenty of hundreds of millions of dollars, man. 
and and they're the best at social media. That's why I followed started following them in the first place because I was trying to figure out social media for myself. You know, I'm a trader trying to turn into a content creator as opposed to what happened in 2020, 2021 where a bunch of people tried to trade, they all lost or made some money and then lost in 2022 and then became influencers and creators, right? Because they got addicted to trading and then they realized, oh, there's a lot of money in if I could just like basically scam people. It sucks. There's always been scams, but it's just so much now. And everyone's so full of it. So much ego and think that like, I, I just don't. Everyone thinks they're the best fucking trader ever and they have all the answers. And they've been trading for one, two fucking years and they're like, I've seen it all. You have not, I promise. But guess what? When I was two years into my journey and pr very profitable at that point, I thought I knew everything too. And the markets over the last years have taught me that I know nothing. And I want to know nothing. I want to be growing. I want to be always growing, be open, and not think that I'm the best fucking trader ever because I'm not. I'm not even close. I've never thought that. But I know that I'm a fucking good mentor. And I'm a good trader. I'm not saying I'm not good. I know I'm a good trader. I just don't consider myself to be like one of the best traders out there. I think I am one of the best NASDAQ longs out there. That's public at least and legitimate. But, um, but I don't fool myself, you know? I know what my limitations are, but I'm happy too. That's the thing. I don't have to make millions of dollars a year to be happy and nor do you. And I try to remind my people that all the time. Uh, extra 50 Gs a year goes a long fucking way, y'all. For some of you, that's your entire income. For some of you, that's double your yearly income. So you don't have to make a million dollars a year or half a million even. Fuck, 10K a year. That's an extra 10 Gs. 15K, 15K. That's an extra, like that is what I always try to remind myself when I'm working with students too, man. You're joking, right, Stanford? I really hope you're fucking joking. Um, I won't dog on anyone publicly. I don't say names. It's not my game. Now, if you become one of my personal students, I don't hold back any information from them. I let them know who, how I feel about who, but I'm not the type to come out publicly and talk shit about anyone. It's, not my, it's definitely not about me. I just don't want people who come to me and want to learn and want real advice, I will never steer them in a direction that I believe to be shitty. That's all. Well, have fun with that. Can I explain how and why I found my overnights and why I bought AGRI? Yes. So anytime I'm looking for the next runner, all right? Anytime I'm looking for the next runner, the main question you have to ask yourself is, what has been moving lately the most? What has been the most volatile late, lately? Bringing in the most volume, moving the most. And the answer is pretty simple. Over the last month, it's been strictly bottom bouncers, some reverse splits, and a few SPACs or IPOs. Okay? A couple uplistings too. Those have been the most volatile in terms of my scans every single day. And I scan every single day. I've been doing it for eight years. Okay? This scan right here, I've been looking at it for eight years and the top percent gainers, and I got no cap on it, okay? Anyone who says they have proprietary trading strategy, tell them to shove it up their ass. I'm, I'm sorry, proprietary scanning software, whatever, scanning metrics, fuck that. You don't need it. This is what I do. I scan for everything. And then when I want to eliminate a bunch of plays and see what's in play from a volume perspective, I'll just throw it up to like half a million or a million, percent change five, that's it, okay? Looking at this scan forever, Top percent gainers are always small cap. It just is what it is. In this case, over the last few weeks, the biggest runners and the best plays from a multi-day, multi-week perspective have been bottom bouncers moving from 10 cents. AXLA, um, what else? NVOS, NVOS. Um, 
Axla. Axla. Um, AVTX? AVTX, last few days. Just going by memory here. Um, that is why, okay? That is why right now, when I look at my scan in the morning, I'm looking for 10 cent stocks. When I'm looking at my scan throughout the day, I'm looking for 10 cent stocks. And for those who want to know, and this, I'm giving, I'm just not gatekeeping right now, y'all. And if you're appreciating the lack of fucking gatekeeping right now, please smash the like button. Please subscribe, man. Um, I am here to get you guys better information on YouTube than is currently on it about trading small cap in particular. But this cuts across all trading, man. I don't care if you're trading mid cap or what you're trading. Same shit applies in terms of buying low, selling high, getting ahead of the crowd, understanding where volume is going to go, selling to people like some of the people that you guys are mentioning. I sell to those people when they're chasing it and all their students when they alert it to them. That's the whole thing, man. That's my whole MO. It's always been that. And it's been more so that forever. And now I've got my students selling to other people's students too. I have my students beating me to entries and selling selling to other people's students the same way I am. And nothing makes me fucking happier. And that's why I'm trying to bring more people in. And I'm trying to get people away from so much of the other shit out there, man. Fuck. I get really mad, man, because I watch all day. I have to... So I haven't taken in like YouTube or any sort of educational stuff outside of me tapping into the resources that I have available to me, which are some of the best traders in the world that I can call at any point. Um, that's where I learn the most from these days. Several old books. I've been getting into some older value investing type things, other ideas that are helping my day trading, by the way. If you think investing and day trading aren't the same, there are so many similarities, man. If you can buy low, sell high, you can buy low, sell high anywhere. That's my belief, if you can figure this game out. So, okay, let's go. So, we got our scan here. Um, I am trading 10 cent stocks right now because those have been the most volatile. I don't overcomplicate the shit when you're trying to find stocks that can run, okay? Go to my scan. I did this exact thing yesterday with the Wolf Pack, right? And it is a video lesson for them. So enjoy this again, the lack of gatekeeping this morning. Filters, highest price, 20 cents. Percent change, zero. Volume, zero. That's it. Boom. Hit me with it. This is what I got. Let's start with the cheapest first, the most expensive first, and we'll go down to the cheapest. 20 cent stocks. We got a bunch of these here. First of all, we got how many on the, on this? Uh, we got 70 something tickers or something like that under a buck now. Uh, under 30 cents, I'm sorry. 20 cents, I'm sorry. And then for me, what actually what I've been doing is even less because I know it has been these 10, 8 cent stocks, right? This is literally all I did yesterday. Went, checked it out. Filtered by the lowest, looking at the smallest market caps, those are probably going to move the most. We got CNXA, like I said, LIFW, EJH, ignore those, ignore those, WNW, Gamble, GMBL, RVLP, which I'm long that. Uh, I have a small position on that. SXTC, that's all I did. I went and looked at the cheapest stocks yesterday, and guess what? They all gapped up big this morning. I didn't buy them until I didn't. Okay, so let's see. Where's AGRI now? AGRI is at 13 cents. Where are you? There's AGRI. All right. But yesterday, this was up here as one of the cheapest stocks. It's like 10 cents. This doesn't mean I'm just buying all the 10 cent stocks and letting them go. But it means I'm going here to look at tickers and see what may or may not go to then go through dilution tracker and see what's going on with their dilution at the moment um, and all that good stuff. So AGRI popped here. We went through all these tickers yesterday in my chat, in the Discord. Um, AGRI, I bought literally right here yesterday. And then I bought some on the pool yesterday. Right up in here. That was it. There was nothing to this trade, y'all, other than understanding where volume can go. And then understanding that I don't want to chase it when it's up 100%. 
I want to sell it when I'm up 100%. When everyone's trying to figure out how to fucking get into AGRI this morning, you know, here and here and fucking up here and here and here and here. I was just selling shares. I was just selling shares. Okay. Does that make sense? So very basic. I ended up on the cheap stocks on my scan because that's what the market told me to do. Plain and simple. And then this morning, if you looked at my scan, like the first, you know, prior to the open, there were only about 20 of them. And half of them were sub 15 cent stocks because I'm not the only one who figured it out. Problem is when everyone figures it out, if you've watched my video on contrarian trading before, when everyone figures something out, it stops fucking working, man. For the most part. What else? Let's talk about, so that's, so that's macro guys. I let the macro dictate what stocks I look at. If, if all I've been seeing last week, or if maybe on Monday we get a biotech that's trades at $5 then gaps up to seven on phase two news and then spikes to like 20 bucks. Okay. I will immediately shift gears from looking for 10 cent stocks to looking for $5 fucking biotechs. That's that simple. That is the mentality that has kept me from having FOMO and kept me adapting and finding the next one and finding the next one and finding the next one, as opposed to like just being stuck in last week's shit or yesterday's patterns. I adapt. That's, and I keep it simple, man. We get a huge runner. Okay, break it down. What is it? Oh, it's a biotech. It's a $5 biotech that went to seven, spiked to, okay. Um, well, what kind of drug do they have? What was their float? What country are they from? Seriously, any of these things you can ask yourself. And then, and then I go to my scan. And if it were a $5 biotech, what would I do? Uh, well, I would probably do something like this. That's what I would do, right? So if we had a $5 biotech that was just going berserk, up 200%, 300% on phase news. This is what I would do. I'd hit my filters. I'd change these filters around. Boom, boom, boom. That spits out 12 stocks. Now, in that case, if that were the case, um, then I would start breaking them down. You know, which one has a similar float? Is there one maybe with a similar drug? Similar chart, right? That sort of thing. Keep it very simple. So that's what I do when I'm scanning all day. I'm not just sitting here. There's no, I don't need the scan to tell me what the, f I don't need someone else's parameters and all the shit. I just need to be able to narrow it down. You need to know what you're looking for in your scan. Everyone just gets their scan and fucking lets it tell them what, and then they just have 20, 30 stocks to trade. They don't know what to do, which is fine. For me, I use macro. What's been running lately. I use that to then get my eyes in the right fucking places, man which is a big part of this game, big, huge part of this game. So right now, this morning, I was looking for 10 cent stocks. Next week, it might be $20 fucking stocks, man. I don't care, okay? I hope that makes sense, y'all. This shit's private, man. I, I've only done this for my students forever because that's who I care about. I really care about them too. It's not like, and the more I've been working with them one-on-one, -on -one, the more personal this mission has become. That's why I'm on YouTube right now. I watch, I watch these cats get to me after trading for two fucking years or three years and spending 10 G's, 15 G's, 20 fucking thousand dollars on education and they know fucking nothing man nothing i don't want to say nothing they know basic technical analysis and they know that you buy breakouts or something like that that's all they know it's fucking terrible sorry about the rants this morning i've just been taking in so much social media and so many youtubes It's crazy.
Today, the only one I hit was AGRI. It's the only one I got overnight from 11 cents. I sold it into 18 and 19 pre-market and then a little bit into weakness too. The last bit of shares into weakness this morning. And then I played CGC overnight. I've still got um, a fifth of my position right now. I've only got 2,000 shares left from a buck 16. And I bought this a few days ago. Uh, this day, at the end of the day, when it bounced. Specifically, right? Specifically right in here. Literally right there is where I bought. And the risk was right here. Very important. Anyways, y'all. Um, I think we're going to pretty much wrap up. Am I still in contact with Tim Sykes? Yeah. Yeah, we're still in contact. He travels a lot and shit. He's a busy dude. I am super busy teaching all the time and with my students and with my family. Remy. Is mom not up? She's here. Yes, she is. She didn't just leave you. You can, you can play the switch for 15 minutes. That's it. At 10 o'clock, no more switch, okay? Try to take that kid's switch from him. We don't give it to him anymore very often because you try to take it from him, it's like a crackhead. And you just took his crack away. <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, I'll give you one more piece of advice before I check out. Um, the tickers that have been doing a lot of volume since 2021, I think. Well, it started in 2020. But we saw the rise of HFTs and small cap. They weren't around before, I'm, I'm sure of it, from how stocks used to trade prior to 2020 um but they're definitely present and if you look at if you look at a lot of the moves over the last few weeks um well this last week's been basically bottom bouncers but uh let's see like um the ones that do massive volume and then are range bound What I'll say is the stocks that trade a shit ton of volume, okay, some of these gappers, um, from a pattern perspective, they've been predictable, man. They've been predictable. They are taking liquidity at key levels. They're taking it. They're taking it and then reversing it. That's why shorts are so twisted lately for the last like year, a lot of them. Um, and longs have fucking sucked too for people who haven't figured this thing out of what's been happening. It's been happening. Um, they take pre-market highs. If they get pre-market highs or a new high a day, they flip it and they reverse it there. And you'll see liquidity come in, th in these levels. Uh, VWAP as well. They like to fuck with VWAP. They break VWAP down. I don't use VWAP as risk. I will use VWAP as targets at times. That's my first target. But basically, that's what they've been doing. You know, they're going to take liquidity at all these areas. They're going to walk them up. They're going to walk them back down which is why it's so important to understand that in the markets right now, when we're trading stocks, it's so much better to work off of the lows. And if you can be patient and let lows break, the problem is for even my students who are getting away from trading breakouts, one of the main things that starts to happen is you just take paper cuts, man. Um, you buy low a day, you get stopped. You buy low a day, you get stopped. You buy low a day, you get stopped. That is the game that I started playing when I started dip buying. I get it, man. I get it. But I promise you, if you're getting legs down and you're starting to dip buy a little bit that way and figuring out the risk reward involved in it, in that case, 
you will get better. It, and it really comes down to patience and understanding of the markets at the moment and the patterns at the moment. But if nothing else, from a very basic standpoint, if you're risking off pre-market support for the most part and get good range to view app or high of day, those are much better areas of the charts to play, guys, in general. I'm not saying all the time. There are times where I'm playing breakouts too, but I'm buying pull, pullbacks to breakouts as well. If you look at your axlas, all these bottom bouncers that went on multi-day runs, the cool part about them recently is that they've set up multi-day runs, then they've broken out. These breakouts are better, okay? We've seen these breakouts that pull back uh, day two to the breakout level. So very clean, old school breakouts here. You could even see day three, day four, day, f day four post breakout, it started to pull back and held levels. Um, and we're, we've been seeing that on some of these. NVOS, another great example. Multi-day breakout, pull back over the next several days that one took, then another leg up. So, last chance for questions, my friends. Last chance. Then I, my son, is my wife really not here? she go um you can scan the qr code that qr code at the bottom uh will take you straight to the wolf pack man and if you use 20 off you get 20 percent off monthly um for what and then for the one-on-ones portion um it's basically through interview only at this moment my whole deal with that is that i'm spending at this point 15 to 20 hours of my week talking with students dude one-on-one -on -one. 15 to 20 hours of my week. That's like one full fucking day of my life every week right now that I am giving to my students. Um, I don't want to give it to people who aren't serious at the end of the day. So that's my whole game. You know, I, I've, I'm giving my all to the people who want to give their all with me right now. It's kind of a special thing going on. And for the next, however long I can manage to hold up this pace of like, 15, 18 hour work days again. And um, as long as I can hold the pace, I'm going to fucking hold this pace, dude. And crank it up. You guys can also hit rwtrades.com if you want. And then if you have, if you have questions or whatever, um, you can always DM me. You can always email me. I'll throw it in the chat for you. You can always email Tanner, by the way. That's probably the easiest way because he screens people for me too. He's one of my closest students, my right-hand man, great trader, provider of simps for me at times. <laughs> but you can also shoot him a message um, and he'll get you all sorted. We are capping it because I I want to make sure everyone who has lifetime access, one-on-one um, -on -one access to me, can have it. So at some point we're capping when it's when there's too many. <clears throat> okay. What do we do? What's it? Yeah. So I mean, the wolf pack itself. I do this every day. Literally this, except we start, yeah, about 30 minutes before market opens, sometimes 15 minutes. We do pre-market prep every day. We do live trading every morning in this format. <clears throat> then throughout the rest of when I'm done with my webinar, we've got um, a sick seven-figure trader. Uh, he goes by Mr. French in the chat, and he's fucking awesome at price action, man, at reading tape. He's one of the best I've seen, and I've seen a lot of people He's one of the best I've seen at um, at putting what's happening in the tape into words in real time for you to see and actually understand, actually see it, not just bullshit, like, oh, there's some soaking here, but actually explaining it and showing you algorithmic um, trading, really, explaining how the algorithm algorithms work. He actually worked um, for a couple of big companies that ran algorithms. He's a... Uh, so he does that uh, most days. He'll do his commentary. 
and he specializes also in dip buying, man, and reversals. He's very similar to me. Just uh, he plays in some different spots based off of tape and price action. So we've got that going on. A um, lot of mentorship, boot camps, boot camps uh, that I do every month in person. Those are free for my lifetime members um, and it's huge discount for my monthly members. I think 50% off or something like that. Uh, so it's pretty much the most encompassing, in my opinion, mentorship out there at the moment where it is like an actual mentor. I am your coach. I will know who you are. I will know how you trade. I will go through your trades. I will go through your results. I will not fucking hand feed anyone anything. I will not baby you guys. But I give you what I believe are the best answers at the moment to get you to a better place. And that's what's been magical, man. I've been giving people, you know, individual thoughts um, after going through their psychology and stuff like that. And I see him a couple weeks later or a month later or whenever we talk next and we're working on something different. So it is a beautiful thing. Am I not worried about my strategies disappearing if I get too many students? No. No. Actually, I used to be really... And, and honestly, I had a strategy in 2007. My reverse split, split pump strategy for my original guide. Still to this day, the best ever strategy created in small cap, in my opinion. Still somewhat relevant, but now it's crowded. Um, sorry, one sec. That strategy was was uh, taken and put on YouTube a long time ago, and the video blew up and the strategy changed forever. So, am I concerned? No, that that messed me up back in the day. But what I realized is, once the patterns change, anyways, I could figure out how to trade the new patterns when the patterns on splits changed. It wasn't the same, still not the same. Sorry, y'all. Um, and at the end of the day, I will continue to adapt. The patterns continue to change. I'll continue to teach people how to do that themselves. But no matter what I teach, everyone will be trying to keep up with me anyways. That's the way I see it these days. And if a pattern goes away, I will find the next pattern. That's all there really is to it. And at the end of the day, at this point, I would rather be at least sharing portions of my strategies and getting them out there than having people just steal them and throw them up for free and then take it the hard fucking work that I put in years and years to figure certain things out and then they steal it and just throw it up. You know what I mean? That's my whole issue with the content creation game. No one's original. And I'm not saying these strategies, I'm the only one who ever had this idea. But it certainly was, these are original ideas. A lot of my strategies, because I don't like trading the bullshit that are all of you guys trade. All of you guys lose. Why the fuck do I want to trade your strategies? Fuck that. You know? So I've always developed my own. Not always, because I started doing what everyone does. But once I realized the power that I can find my own fucking edge and my own strategy and my own scenarios that make sense and give me a why, fuck, dude. This strategy was the best ever. Reverse split pump. They used to split in 2019, 2018, 2017. They would split at four or five bucks, three bucks. They would fade to a dollar. They have to hold a dollar for compliance. I would load a buck. They would pump it. Or I could even buy when the PR came out at a buck 20 or a buck 10. They wouldn't be running too much. And then they would go to two. They would go to four. They would become the biggest runners in the market, period, every time. The biggest runners in 17, 18, 19 were always a re recent split. Always. 
okay? Almost every single parabolic, almost every single fucking one looked like this in 2017, 2018, 2019, all right? I was hesitant to put that strategy out because they were fresh low floats, um, but I felt it was worth it for my students and for just people trading in general to realize, look, it's not just breakouts and shit. And if that's all you trade, you're probably going to struggle. But you can find your own strategies through tracking, through seeing patterns develop over and over and over again. I only figured this out because I kept trading parabolics and I kept seeing this little fucking thing here on all, all the tickers I was trading. It's like, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's a split. Then I realized, okay, it's a split. And then you get into compliance. They got to hold a buck for 10 days. They can't get under a buck either. And if they get under a buck, they can be delisted. Super powerful. That gives you a why as to what this company, this sketchy ass motherfucker is going to do. And then once you realize, oh, okay, they got a split to stay compliant. They, and they're going to pump it if it gets down towards a buck. That's what happened. But now, but fucking now, they don't go to a buck anymore. These motherfuckers all want to load it at two and three bucks or five or the first fucking day or the second day, you know? So the patterns have shifted. And my whole game's get ahead of everyone. Be ahead of the sheep. Be ahead of everyone who's doing all this shit. So I've had to adjust strategies and and yeah, load. Not at a buck. The beauty of the buck was the buck was the floor in my head. And I would see them go under a buck and fucking always close over a buck no matter what. So. So yeah, great question. Am I worried? Nope. I'm not. Now, if I am trading strategies on low floats and liquid low floats, like certain swing trades sometimes on sector plays, stuff like that. Yeah, that's different. But I don't mind giving away an odd strategy or two here, here or there, because you're not going to be able to do it like me. Just watching one video on it. Promise you. Last questions, and then we do have to wrap up. That was a great question, though. Was my agri a swing? It was an overnight trade. Not quite a swing trade. It was an overnight trade. And I bought it after hours yesterday too. I bought it right here. Literally right here and some on the dip. After hours yesterday. And then I sold it this morning when I woke up from bed. I sold a few shares from my bed. Literally from my cell phone. Pre-market from my little app. Into 18. Um, I got to my computer. I sold some more here into 18.17, sold some more into the 16s, took the rest off, uh, took a few shares off here, took a few shares off here, and the rest off here. Easy peasy. I, You know what? Go back and watch this whole thing if you want the trade thesis. I already gave it. I've talked about it several times in this, in this live stream. Okay? So I do mind. I want to keep saying it. I talk about it extensively, not just the thesis, but everything that goes into how I found the fucking stock, why I traded it today, yesterday, and not why I may not trade something like this next week. Okay. I go into fucking detail for you. No bullshit. I go through how I found it, why I wanted it to trade a 10 cent stock last night. And what I think these things may be able to do throughout the rest of the year. As long as these stocks keep going to 10 cents and 9 cents and 8 cents. And it behooves you guys. Do you, you guys probably don't. Most people who trade NASDAQ don't even know the fucking rules for these stocks to be listed on the goddamn exchange. There are rules. There are a bunch of rules. Learn them. It'll help you. Learn your market. If you trade futures, you need to know how everything works. The markets work. If you're trading options, you need to know how everything fucking works. It's your job to do that. Treat this like a fucking profession, you guys. You know, treat it like a fucking profession. It's not a game. For some of you, it's a game. And you think it's fun and games and oh, I'll come make money. No, I will take the money from you. Someone's taking your money when you lose money. 
I sell to you fucking guys. And it's not via pumping. I, I can do this by myself. Zero chat. I don't alert my trades. I don't alert my trades because I want to know that they fucking work. And that if I, all everyone goes away tomorrow and I don't have any friends. And all I have is this scan. And a chart. If this is all I fucking have right now. That I can make money. And I don't need anyone to fucking do it for me. You know, everyone wants to be spoon fed shit. It's not how it works. Figure it out. There's macro to this. There are ways to figure out what's going to move next or at least be in the ballpark. A lot of people aren't in the ballpark. You're still in yesterday's ballpark and there ain't no game going anymore. You know, just a bunch of janitors cleaning shit up and that's you're still stuck there. And I found the next one. I found the AGRI this morning and next week I may be playing a 10 or $20 stock. And you guys might be still stuck looking at 10 cent stocks that are going to go to five cents or some shit. All right. Really hope all this made sense to you guys. Did it make sense? Let me know in chat. Did you guys enjoy it? Let me know in chat, please. Please smash the like if you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you subscribe because I am going to be going live. Randomly. Pre-market prep, we will do every single Monday for sure. Um... So join me on this Monday. We'll be doing pre-market prep. If you hit the little bell notification, I think it'll probably let you know when I'm going live and stuff like that. So that'll help. The rest of you, damn, man. Thanks for joining to my pack, people. Thank you for joining me this morning. Decent little Friday. Super chill trading. Some of the cats in the pack had their best ever trades this morning, which is beautiful to see. Um... The, the growth and the progress and just the light that switches on for you guys. It's why I'm here on YouTube right now, hoping to help some more fucking people get out of this shit that everyone else does, man. It's all bullshit, dude. Straight up. I'm not saying you can't trade breakouts. Right now I'm looking for breakouts, but there's a very specific things that I'm looking for. The rest of the time, I'm not a big fan. And guess what? When If any of these break out, I'll be selling to, or maybe adding to my positions on the breakouts. Okay. So let's talk like Axla is a great, is a picture perfect example of the best possible potential of a bottom bouncer. Okay. Which is <clears throat> 10 cents to a buck 60, man, 1500% or some shit that, that this thing ran over the last two weeks, three weeks. And so this day right here, y'all see this day, this day right here is what I'm looking at right now on, um, Obviously, like Agri. Um, let me fix my scan again. LIFW. AWIN, right? LIFW in particular. AWIN's not bad either. But I really don't. I really like LIFW's chart right now. Um, these guys. And what am I going to look for? Okay, we got to get macro right now. We got to get a little creative right now. Look at Axla, right? Big, huge volume day, 372 million. 10 cents, hit 50 cents, closed in, in the 40s. Two really big days to the downside. They got below day one's lows, okay? So I am waiting for weakness on these things to possibly reload, possibly sell back into highs. And this is what I'm saying, possibly add to the breakout too. Does that make sense? So right now on these things, I'm, I have a good mind frame. I'm not really trying to chase or get into Agri right now, or Agri is pretty ugly. They don't seem like the best candidate for me, but you never know. My only issue is they did volume here. They did some volume here and they, they keep sucking, which is why I'd be more drawn to, uh, probably LIFW, even the floats a little bit bigger there though. They did come from five cents. Look at that shit. Oh my God. This happened while I was teaching you guys. That sucks. I, I wouldn't have necessarily nailed it anyways. But let's look at the pattern, okay? Let's look at this pattern. Morning spike pattern for the most part, which we've been seeing. And we've been seeing uh, something very similar to this too. New high of day, breakdown, new low of day, right? So just some kind of consolidation in this, mor this morning. Breakdown of lows, dude. Breakdown of lows. Eight cents hold again. Again, I'm, I've been telling you guys, eight, 10 cents. If these things can hold 10 cents, it's a big deal for them. It's a big, big deal for them. 
I don't know what the NASDAQ rule is, but there is a rule that has to do with they got to hold eight cents. They got to hold a buck, they got to hold eight cents. Is stocks a trade a scam? No, it's definitely not a scam. I've never said that. I don't think anyone's ever said that. It just crashes too much for my liking for people who don't have good computers. And if you're spending money like that on a scanner, I need it to work all the time. That's my only issue. And if they fix that one thing and it didn't crash, I'd have zero issues with it. I think it's a cool platform. I love their charting. Um, but that's my issue is that it, and, and they charge too much, I think at times scans, uh, which I use never lets me down, man. Maybe, th maybe a handful of times throughout my trading career where this hasn't been up for me. And I just like the aesthetics of it, man. I like everything about it. I find everything I need right here. I don't need anything else. Um, I also use them for their news stream. If I am doing news, I will also have this up in the mornings pre-market. Like this is literally what I see pre-market will be these two screens in the morning. All right, so. Let me see if there are any questions I've missed. Awesome reversal, man. Freaking amazing reversal there. And I just have been teaching you guys. So thanks a lot. Again, I wouldn't necessarily nailed it, but. <clears throat> but again, another chart. And when we, so like when we get char charts like this and they're kind of drawn out, what I like to do in the morning is switch the five and 15 minute. And I will play gap and crop reversal essentially on five and 15 minute time frames too. So I look for slowing down to selling on the five minute time frame. I'll look for maybe pre market support. It didn't have any here. Um, what a shame, actually. You know, that was a beautiful reversal. But here's the idea, y'all. My very last, my very last uh, note. No matter what I'm doing, if I switch to the five minute, I'm looking for a reversal on the 15 minute. Targets are VWAP, high of day, pre-market highs. As a general rule of thumb, once I get through pre-market highs, and I'm talking about day trading here, not necessarily swing ideas. But if I get through pre-market highs, that's bonus. So when people are like a single, what's a single? To me, singles, if I'm selling it at VWAP on this pattern, that's what a single looks like, okay? Um, then high of day. So I have very specific price targets. Forget the prices. I'm just talking about the exact price action and this pattern. You can transpose this to $5 stocks, $10 stocks. I don't give a shit. This might be uh, $9 and $10 and $11, okay? I don't care what it is, but that's how I look at it. That's exactly how I look at it. How many LOD snaps will I take before I give up on a stock? I don't have a set amount, but you won't see me in and out four or five times or even three, generally speaking. But I am always aware that if I get a leg down and I may be a little too early and I get another leg down and I may be a little bit too early and then I get another big leg down or something like that, that might be the best opportunity. And I still want to press buttons there, if that makes sense. What I do do, what I do do is I take what I do do, uh, what I do is I will, if I take right now, the, the rule I've been implementing is if I, if I take uh, three losses in a row on a setup day by day by day. So if on Monday I come and I'm trading uh, morning, early morning, 15 minute range gap and crap reversal idea. Shit, man, look at that. Okay, hold on. I feel like I got to hit my scan again. I wonder if it, these other ones are going to hit simps are going to turn and sympathy a win might here's the thing when lifw starts getting going like that people get excited again so i get kind of excited again so i gotta do this again i gotta do this shit again all right let's go let's find a simp let's see what we got a win agri Sissy and Ebet. Hey, if you're happy, I'm still going. Smash that like button. <laughs> still a liquid. 
but that's the start. They always start a liquid. 10 cent hold. This one hadn't hit 10 cents, but look at that. 11 cent hold right there. Problem is, back to 11, that's a decent percentage chunk. So you have to remember this, guys. Yeah, it goes up 5 cents or 2 cents. It's a large percentage gain. It goes down 1 cent, 2 cents. It's a large percentage gain. So I have to be as accurate as I can be or I have to size way down so that I can add more. When I am trading these cheap stocks, and this is me, I'm looking for um, a lot of shares most times. Because to take advantage of the fact that five cents on a 10 cent stocks a 50 percent gain i'm only looking for five cents so to make it worth it for me i'm i'm trading hundreds of thousands of shares at a time or a hundred thousand shares at a time or fifty thousand shares at a time right i'm not trying to compete with anyone man i'm not trying to compete with stocks to trade chad or tim or fucking anyone i don't really give a fuck I'm just trying to help traders out. That's it. As many as I can. And if they find me, then fucking lucky to them is how I feel. And that's not me being braggadocious or fucking full of myself at all. It's just I know that where that our room is the best place to be in terms of long, biased, particularly um, small and mid-cap trading. No one finds the tickers like we do. And a big portion of that is because I've been showing them how I've been doing this for such a long time how to sell to, to everyone else. There's a, there's a method to it and it's not random as I've been trying to show you today. It's far from random. How many times have I been, when holding overnight, been caught in an offering? Happened to me a few times. Uh, plenty of times, bro. Plenty. Maybe 10, you know, over the years. Generally speaking, once or twice a year, I get caught in one. Generally speaking. I would watch a win for a potential push. Maybe even Agri can hold too. I would love for some of these to turn into some of these multi-days. I'm just not going to throw good money at bad money at the moment. Personally, I'll wait for these to set up a little bit more. My MO, um, morning trades, and then generally speaking, um, the afternoon. Yeah, no, the whole thing for me, guys, I'm not, I've never... Never been trying to compete. In fact, the reason y'all haven't seen me on YouTube for a long time um, is because of that. I haven't been trying to compete. I actually have not wanted a bunch of students, man. I've wanted to work with a small group of students, and I didn't want to work with new students. I wanted students who had been, I don't have to work on the basics with because that has been my specialty over time has been taking traders who have been struggling for a couple years but know the basics and then and then helping them with the gray area that people don't teach that can help push them to the next level. People like Jack and Dom and Huddy and those cats. Um, when I was working with them, that they were already they already knew the basics. All I had to do was help sharpen their tools and give them some new psychological tools and some other ideas. And um, same with the new millionaire students that we've had and some of the new six figure students that we've had. You know, I, that's that's been the deal. But right now, I don't want. I'm sick of unfucking people, man. All these people that I end up teaching have been trading for years because I'm not good at marketing and I don't like marketing, man. I don't like any of that shit. I don't like the industry. I love trading and teaching and I fucking hate the industry straight up, even though it's the industry that got me into this at the first place, you know, like the marketing is what got me into trading anyways. <sighs> right. But. So I've, I'm not trying to compete, but now I am, I've opened up for the first time over the last six months, I've opened up to new students. Um, you know, our group was 200 people for like four years, pretty much, man.
So that's why you're you're all gonna see a little bit more of me, man. I'm not trying to um Yeah, ACB's looking decent. I think CGC's looking decent for next week too, at least a push towards those highs from last week. Rubio said, I bought Agri yesterday at 0 0.079 and sold after hours on the very first push for 10%. Why do you people hold longer? What do you mean, you people? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, dude, that's all right. You know, that's all right. That's actually a sick trade, bro. You know, I don't, you had a better entry than I did. Uh, but in terms of why I held longer, it's because right now it's paid to do that. All right. Look at Axla. Look at Axla, 10 to 50, okay? NVOS, 8 cents to 24 to 54. And I'm not saying I'm holding these things forever. I'm saying I'm looking to play these if they set up for multi-day breakouts and stuff because it's been working. And when it works, I just keep on doing it, all right? Um, Any more questions? How many students do I have now? I want to say like 400 maybe. About 400. But active on any given day? I mean, like right now. So right now we've only got like 175 in the pack that are active right now. It's a small group. It's and it's um That's why it's so awesome right now especially, I believe. And and I'm trying to keep the culture as it grows. So I've built a culture in the room that's special and different than other cultures. It's not ticker spamming, it's not pumping. In fact, it's a very, very small portion of what we do is just talk about tickers. Everyone's there to get better. When people have issues, we do it. We do trader therapy on Wednesdays. Maybe I'll post, an, post one of those trader therapies to uh, YouTube for you guys because that's been the biggest fucking game changer for the people I work with and for me. Every Wednesday, it used to be Fridays, but every Wednesday we'll get together and do trader therapy. It's a, It's a... Not an open discussion, but it is a interactive experience, basically. I started off, we don't talk patterns, we don't talk strategy, we talk mindset, and we talk psychology and what was going through your fucking brain this week that held you back, or that maybe spurred you on. That's good, too. Shit, we get into personal issues. Um, it truly is what it is. It's therapy, man. And it's fixed my trading all year, over and over again. I did it this last week. Who was, who was in trader therapy this week on Wednesday? Was I happy? Did I feel good about my trading Wednesday? If anyone knows, let me know. I didn't. I was kind of down in the dumps because I've been missing things and I, you know. Uh, but we did trader therapy. We came up with some solutions for myself and for the others in the room who have been struggling with similar ideas. And boom, I had zero fucking confidence on Wednesday, really. I couldn't pull the trigger like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It happened to me last week too. And then I had a decent Friday. But we did trader therapy Wednesday, came up with some ideas. And today, you know, boom, good to go. So there's the proof for me. And it keeps working. I keep getting struggling with confidence. And I tell them, okay, my when I'm struggling with confidence, I like to size down and press buttons when plays are there. And I did that yesterday. And then by, by the end of the day, I had 90,000 shares of Agri after hours. My confidence comes back that fast if I'm doing the right things. So, 
Yeah, I'm not competing with anyone. I am just trying to get, trying to help some new traders, man. And get to some of you guys before you have to spend 20 Gs or 10 Gs spinning your wheels for a couple years. That's the last thing I want. It's very, very, very personal, uh, my mission at the moment. And I don't want to bring in, I don't want to bring in, um, for some reason, the people I attract to the room and everyone in my group are fucking awesome humans, man. They're, I, we haven't had to kick one person out. Everyone just, uh, I can't explain what's happening. Well, I can. It's just a, almost a movement in my eyes. Something different. And most importantly is effective. Effective. Obviously, Tim's got millionaire students, legit ones. There aren't too many else out there, at least, that have actual good students that they can be like, look, I helped this trader. It's just like, look at my trades. And, I'll, you know, it's, again, we're getting into the space and how much it sucks. But long stream this morning. Holy shiza. If you guys enjoyed, smash the like. I appreciate you so much. Um, again, got that QR code if you want to be part of what we got going on over here. It's different, man. It's better. I promise. Um, check these tickers out one more time. So that's that. You know, bottom bouncers this week. Next week, it might be something different, and I'll figure out what that is if it happens. Um, if you're just joining or definitely go back, I would, I think this was probably a decent live to learn quite a bit from in terms of my process, how to find stocks that can run, how to position yourself correctly. Once you get into this mind frame, it's hard to go back to chasing bullshit all day. All right. It's really fucking hard. It's hard to buy chase breakouts. It's hard to chase anything. If you want my definition of chase, here's my last bit of advice for the day. Chasing is anything that takes me out of good risk reward on my trade. So if my risk level is 33 on this trade and my first price targets VWAP or 36 cents, okay? I got to get snuggle up close to 33 cents to make that one to three, if that makes sense to you guys. All right. I'm trying to get good range on the pools. That's, NVOS is not a good ticker to look at this morning. Um, LIFW is okay. So we get that pool towards lows. If I'm playing a midday kind of reversal, I got to get good risk reward to VWAP. So if I'm trading it at 8.084, I need 0 0.085, 0 0.086, 0 0.089 max. And even then it's kind of pushing it. Obviously to high of day, that's different targets that you set you can get better risk reward. But the reason why I've done well over time and why my students are doing better than most other people's students at this moment is because of how I try to frame this for them and teach them. Okay? That if you can get, you guys, if you can get good risk reward to your first target and it's a reasonable target where people aren't even thinking about trading it yet, a lot of, most noobs and a lot of the volume, you'll see it doesn't come in until you get through high a day. See that candle right there? Biggest candle of the morning was through high a day. People are waiting for that spot to buy. People are waiting for this spot to buy. A lot of people didn't buy till this spot. A lot of people didn't buy till here because they broke high a day. Everyone's buying breakouts and breakouts and breakouts. Whereas I've gotten great risk reward. When I'm playing these plays route, I have shares left still from nine fucking cents, guys. I really hope that makes sense to you. When I'm trading well, I still have this from nine, maybe 10 cents max. But I, that is what I do. I'm not buying it at 15 and 16. I'm not buying it. And I don't care what chart this is. What price range it fucking is. This could be, like I said, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, $15. This could be $1, $2, $3. I don't care. All right. One, one fifty two. Same principles are always going to apply for me from a price action perspective and where I'm setting price targets and the way I like to look at these charts from a technical analysis standpoint and where to put myself. And that's why, like, some of you will see my PLs at times and you see my entry and it's just a by the low a day. And it's not by accident it's very 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 fucking on purpose guys so a lot of you a lot of you need to change process if you've been just learning from one person i'm not hating on anyone particularly but if it's not working you have to at some point do something else if not it is the definition of insanity or keep paying the person that's not getting you there 
okay? That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. That's what you guys do every day. It's fucking insane to me, you know? And then guess what it's doing to you? When you've been doing that for two years and you're okay with just losing like that and just being not doing well and not doing anything, when you're okay with that, you're certified crazy, bro. That ain't okay. That is why I'm here, dude. That's why I'm doing lives. That's why I'm going to start putting out more YouTube videos. That's why I'm trying to bring more people into the pack so that we can get you away from all this shit, man. That's insanity. Right? Think about it. Makes zero sense. All this time you should have been progressing. A good mentor will help you progress. That's my opinion. A furu, you're going to you're not going to get better. You just aren't. That's the proof that's in the pudding. And the big the big the biggest excuse from all the furus is, well, you didn't work hard enough. Have you been working hard enough? And very much so, very true, right? Majority of you aren't going to work hard enough. That's a fact. So I get that. But for most, it's just an excuse to keep you spinning around in circles and paying more and more and more and more and more. Oh, trading is really hard. It takes years. That's why I just keep fucking paying me. Do you get it? Anyways. That's what it is. That's the game. No one gives a fuck about you. You're a number. Get you in the chat, watch my videos, and fuck off. And guess what? If you make some money, then it will feature you or some shit, right? That's the whole game. They don't care until you make some money. You're just another number through the marketing machines, right? Fuck that. That's, that's what I'm trying to come out here and change a little bit, just a little bit. One trader at a time, man. And I talked, and because I do the one-on-ones, Man, y'all, even right now on this YouTube, okay? Y'all ain't like subscribers and fucking numbers and whatever to me. You guys are people, man. That's what I'm trying to do with this game is understand. And the more I talk one-on-one -on -one with everyone, the more it resonates with me, which is every single one of these people, students matter to me. You know, whoever it is, they're a person with a family and aspirations and fucking problems, you know? Dude, it's, it's heavy, man. I do these calls every day. I get people crying. I have people talking to me about their child, childhood. I have people, it's, 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 it's exhausting, dude, but it's super fulfilling to me right now, which is why I'm going to keep on doing it, man. I don't give a shit how long it takes. Um, I know, I know exactly that it helped me as an athlete to work with mentors one-on-one -on -one for them to watch my technique, for them to watch. Um, the nuances of my game, <clears throat> not the team, not my coach of the team, you know, who has to keep track of everyone, but one trainer, I had a trainer, I had a, um, strength and agility coach. I had a speed training coach. Um, I had a psychology coach. I had every coach you could think of for soccer, man. That's why I got so much further ahead than my peers at the time, right? That's how I got there. Not by just sitting in a group and being expected to learn cookie cutter shit. Taking off chat GBT, you know? Fuck that, dude. Sorry, just looking at a few tickers, losing my voice at this point. I don't know why I'm ranting so much this morning. I, I do know why. I've just been taking in a lot of social media lately. And, um, yeah. It's all good, though. All right. I'm going to do one more round checking for questions, and that's it. Don't be nasty. Oh, sorry, Rubio. I meant to get to your, uh, to, I don't know how I diverge from your question so much, 
But in terms of um, extending gains, bro, the reason that I had a bigger picture mentality is because this is what has been working and they've all been gapping 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200%. So when that happens and I have a macro and I have a good idea that stocks are moving, I try to be patient. Biggest advice I can give you guys who are trying to be more patient as traders, size out. Size out. When you get the urge to sell it all, if you're one of those people who just sell the first pop all the time, sell half. Game changer, man. And then when you realize, holy shit, I can actually sell a tenth of this if I want here. And then be really patient. And as a general rule of thumb, my sizing in and out, but my, my the frequency of sizing out and all that good stuff is based off of conviction, both in the markets and then within the setup. So when I'm sizing out, that's what I base it on. It's a preconceived notion of how much I want to size out into which levels. And then I let the price action dictate it for me if I need to sell more or less. That happens. And oftentimes I'm not right in terms of I haven't sold the best. Like I maybe I sold two thirds too early and only a third at the top or I didn't even get to the top with a third of my shares. That's fine, man. But on AGRI, I had 90,000 shares here after hours and I sold none after hours. I started selling this morning. Luckily, it worked out decently. I could have taken off some chunks after hours. I thought about it, but I didn't because I had faith in the macro right now. And then I took it off into chunks after hours. I got rid of two thirds. All right. And then I held a third for the market open. Then I took it off into chunks. So a little into the weakness, a little into the strength, and then the rest of it kind of mid range. And because of that, I don't sit there sh with FOMO like, oh, fuck, I sold it all. I got to get back in and try to dip by higher. I used to do that. It fucked me all the time. Okay. I'd give back gains. I would get, I would throw good money at bad money. I would have great risk reward on my first trade, <clears throat> inverse risk reward on my second trade, give it all back. Okay. That's what happens. I didn't know it at the time when it started happening to me, but so if you want to extend gains, size out a little bit, you don't have to sell it all. In fact, you, you'd be amazed what it does for your patients when you sell a quarter. Not only that, but the game for me is always minimize risk, right? Minimize risk, minimize risk, get good risk reward, then minimize the risk situation. The second I'm taking shares off into that nice strength or into my first price target, what that does is bring usually my trade to break even even if the rest of my shares get stopped out. So by sizing out, you're de-risking the trade. Now I'm able to sit here. I'm not even going to lose. I can be as patient as possible. Let this plan play out. Okay. So make sure I control it. On the other opposite side of that spectrum, you have a winning trade, right? And I still have some shares. That's always been my thing. I'd rather sell some shares too soon, but also sell some shares at the top then sell all my shares too soon, okay? Um, very unrealistic to, to be buying and then selling all at the top. You're always gonna be selling too soon or too late. But oftentimes with my trades, I'm selling some of them at the top and y'all are selling none from lows to highs, all right? So that's the deal. Just going through the questions just to make sure. Is it time to dip by CGC because ACB is breaking out? Good question. I never give financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. I never, ever tell people to buy or sell anything. That is illegal. I see a lot of people on social, on YouTube, like, I told the whole team, this is where we buy, this is where you... I'm like, that's fucking illegal, you guys. You dumb motherfuckers. You can't do that. You're not a financial advisor. You can't tell people what to buy and sell, but this is the fucking level of dumbness that we're dealing with in our space right now with content creators and shit. They're too lazy to fucking figure out the laws or have no clue that you cannot do that. It's fucking illegal. They could be sued. That's when I know I'm like, this guy doesn't know anything about anything. He doesn't even. So I never tell, I can't tell you what to do. If it were me right now, yeah, I mean, I still have my CGC. But the idea is correct. When I am playing sympathy plays, there's generally speaking a leader. The only I issue is, is that CGC is has been the leader, in my opinion, at least small cap weed stocks. ACB kind of taken over the reins a little bit. And it hasn't been a perfect sympathy. They were running 
you know, this day while CGC had already gone red, I believe. Yep. This day. So sympathies, but yes, that's the correct idea. And if ACB goes nuts, CGC will go too. So in other words, the leader in sector momentum can be passed off. We're talking about all the shit today. Do I think I would go short when there's a market crash? Nah. If there's a market crash, I'll be buying stocks too and bouncing them. I do plan on doing some shorting in the future, but for now, I'm just super happy with the rhythm I'm in and being long and having a very set system that's working really, really well. I'm not going to mess with it. Problem for short selling for me is just that unlimited risk that always occurs. So when I do get back to shorting, I'll use my smaller short, short selling account and that's all. I think it's a great tool, but I also believe it's a tool that's best used by people with bigger accounts and the experience who know what they're doing. And guess what happens to those people? They fucking blow up over and over again. You just don't hear about it. Facts. I, I've heard from brokers, you know, not specific names, but they've said a lot of the people you know who short blow up and you may see them make a million by the end of the year, but you didn't see the five times they blew up that year or whatever. So that's the thing. I don't trust it too much. My biggest loss ever was a short as well. 40 G's. <clears throat> it wasn't fun. If you see my trading style, I'm very low risk. Um, high reward is always what I'm looking for. Period. Especially small cap. I have more money than most of these fucking companies in small cap in my bank. They're shitty. So why the fuck am I going to take my good money and put it in their, their ticker and chase bullshit around? Get this through your fucking heads, guys. Don't chase this shit. It's garbage. You know? None of it. It's all garbage. But it's garbage that runs and runs far and predictably if you know what you're looking for and you're not doing what everyone else is doing. The reason they suck so bad, the reason that these institutional investors get to fuck with us so bad in, in retail is because they prey on the same things that like these funded people prey on and these chat GBT fucking content creating stock trading people prey on, which is that you don't know shit. And because you don't know shit, anything I say with the chart and all oh, confluence and a break of structure. And if I use some complicated fucking words, you're going to think I know what I'm saying. Fuck that, dude. You know, that's how I feel. These are just my feelings, y'all. These are just my feelings. I watch so much social media and listen to these fucking assholes. I'm usually not this abrasive, I promise. I'm usually not this abrasive. My pack people can attest. But this is why I'm here right now. It's why I'm YouTube again. It's why I haven't been doing too much social media content over the last couple of weeks because I've been spending all fucking day working with students. And most of the people on this platform, I'm just saying it, most of the content creators, I can tell, spend most of their time making content because that's what they fucking are. And they know that that's what drives business. That's what drives business to their funded, their funded account people or their affiliate links or whatever the fuck they do to actually make money ain't from the markets. And I know, because guess why? I'm a trader who never did real content creation. I tried doing a couple, I did a couple of YouTubes way back in the day. You know, I was like one of the first on here with like charts and shit. Um, and now I'm, now I've learned the content game. Dude, it's, it takes, it is so time consuming to make content. It is so time consuming. So much so that these people just, all they do is make content. They're not working on their fucking trading. They're just trying to trade to get a trade to put up on YouTube and shit. If you look at my YouTube lives, half of them, I'm not even trading. I have zero PL because there were no trades for me that day because I don't trade to fucking entertain you motherfuckers. I trade to support my family. You know what I mean? All these people on here, and I'm not saying all of them, there are some really amazing traders on YouTube and on social media that I really, really, really respect and learned from. So I'm not saying it's all bad. I'm just saying a lot of it's fucking terrible. A lot of it's fucking really bad, man. 
I just want you guys to have my thoughts. Unadulterated, unfiltered thoughts. Um, the majority of people suck. <laughs> you know, and the majority of people do get into trading to just make a quick buck. And then those people who aren't making their quick bucks are like, oh, they, I mean, I'm convinced like 90% of the influencers that we've seen pop up over the last year in trading didn't get into trading to even trade. They understood that they got into trading to fucking make money from being a content creator. That's what bothers me. I would much rather learn from a trader turned content creator than a content creator turned trader, which you'd be surprised. I've been around a long time, guys, okay? I've been around a long time, been in the game a long time. <clears throat> I've been in the back rooms of the biggest of the big in our space, in our niche. <clears throat> I've seen everything that goes on everywhere. Um, but mainly what I've seen are like some of the content creators shift. There were like content creators who were doing just like credit cards and you know how to maximize your credit card rewards and like YouTubers and shit. And if you, so I didn't know this, but like now that I've gotten into content creation, which blows, but it's okay. I'm doing what I got to do. Dude, even that, that whole game, everyone's just trying to get you to click and like shit, sell you a product. These people are, th these people have like 500 followers. They make a shitty guide. You know, it's just like, it's sickening, but it's all good. My whole thing is I'm just going to do my thing and put my vibe out into the universe and put some actual information that some of you are going to be able to take and change your fucking lives with this fucking webinar. I'm serious. So for some of you, I believe this webinar is going to change your shit forever. That's why I'm here. That's why. So. But once you know anything about trading, it's very easy to separate the content creators from the actual traders. And the ratio is like 90% to 10% or even worse. Motherfuckers, dude. You know, I don't see, I don't have an issue. Content creators like, okay, I have no issue with that. It's fucking cool. You know, make your money, do your thing. But this, especially when you talk to the fucking traders that I talk to every day, to me, is the most egregious fucking place to come pretend like you know what the fuck you're talking about, man. And pretend like you're one of the best traders in the world or some shit. You know? Like you're not even fucking close. None of them. I'm not even close to one of the best traders in the world. Much less these assholes, you know? Whatever. Sorry if I was too negative for some people. Most of the time, I'm the most positive motherfucker on the planet. I'm as glass, glass as half full as possible. It's not even negativity. It's just anger, you know? Because this is people's fucking money and livelihoods. And they have fucking kids, you know? And they're putting their time and effort. And, and y'all are just numbers to these people, man. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a flying goddamn fuck about anyone, you know? Pisses me off, man. What do I think of the guys at SMB? Big fan. I love Lance, dude. I love everything that guy says. Very on point. Um, some of the other cats there as well. Um, Bellafore. I, I'm a big fan of SMB. That is what a real motherfucking prop firm is, you guys. Okay? Last point, and then I'm going to take off. That's what a prop firm is. And guess what? They're not like, hey, give me five Gs and, and then pass a test and you can... Uh-uh. They want to see track record. They, they are trying to actually make money from trading, you guys. Does that make sense? They are an actual prop firm where they bring in traders. They, they screen the traders heavily. They interview the traders. And then they actually help these guys because they are trying to make money as a firm. Right? They're trying to make money as a firm. These other fucking prop firms are not actual prop firms. They are fucking Ponzi scheme funds straight up in my head 
You can have your own opinion about it. But that's what they are. They don't give a fuck. You're not being screened. Give us your money first. That's how we're going to fund the next guy. That's bullshit to me, dude. That's bullshit, you know? But yeah, there are real prop firms. And I think it's a cool tool for sure. And an amazing place probably to grow as a trader, you know, with a, with a lot of cool tools at your disposal that they give these guys. Um, you know, I think it's great. But I also think you can trade your own money too. That's my whole thing. Especially with small cap. Doesn't take a lot of money to get good gains on your money. That's the whole point. Make 100% of my position. What was this today? Uh, 60, 70, 80, 30% of my position. I had 90,000 shares at 10 cents. So I had a $9,000 position. Right? But from that $9,000 position today, I made 65, 6,000 6, from nine. All right? So I can take $1,000 on that ticker and I can make six or $700. It's, that's why I started in small cap because mathematically it's the only place that makes sense outside of options really where you can play basically penny stocks but they're options because they're cheap. But then you got to battle decay, time decay. So they're, they are inherently more risky when you're playing options. Um, anyways... These other funds, they're just give me your money so we can pay out these people. And guess what happens? If they had a bunch of tra good traders who actually wanted to get paid out, I'm sure a lot of them couldn't even afford to do it. So any one of those funds at any moment is a risk of just being fucking. <coughs> and I've been watching a lot of them. Um, and I don't hate on them, man. You know, it's not anything personal with anyone. It's just I've watched this game for a long time and I've seen the scams come and go. And um the main thing for me is conflict of interest. I can't be telling you I'm working for you, like I'm providing a service to you. Um, you pay me for that service, but then I don't want it to work for you. You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense. All right. I should wrap up, but I don't mind just sitting here for a while, if you guys don't mind. Should I stay or should I leave? You guys let me know. Quick vote. Should I end this or should I leave? I love saying Lucci though. Saying Lucci's awesome, dude. I have no problem with a fund. Dude, I have no problem with funds. If it's legit. I have no problem with a fund that is trying to make money. It's trying to make good traders so that they can all make money. I have zero fucking problem with that. And provide them with tools and everything that they need, you know, to be good. I really... I have no problem with that. It's the ones where it's like, and and that it is all of the all of the forex funds pretty much for the most part. Um, I'm not sure about the futures funds. I don't know too much about it. I'm a little bit more familiar with the forex at the moment. Um, this area. On charts recently, I've been looking at these areas to risk off of going into uh, power hour and the last few hours of the day recently. Sorry, I might be a little bit more boring than a lot of the people streaming on YouTube or whatever, but I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. You know why? Because trading's fucking boring. Good trading's boring. Good trading's fucking boring, man. A lot of sitting. Anyone hooting and hollering? Freaking out? They're trying to entertain you. That's fine. If that's their goal to be an entertainer, so be it. As long as they have that distinction, you know? Uh, that's true. What time is it? Oh my God, I have one-on-ones in six minutes. All right. Thanks, Tanner. You the man, buddy. I almost forgot. It was a long-ass stream anyway, so we'll wrap it up. Um, if you got something from this stream, make sure to smash the like.
Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Am I on drugs? Yeah, dumbass. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, not for a very long time. If you know my story, you would know. Um, thank you for joining me, man. If you guys want to join, we got hit that QR code. You can throw 20 off. If you just want a trial, I think you can put in trial wolf 20 or something like that. I don't know. Maybe Tanner can put it. Um, outside of that, Monday morning, free pre-market prep here on YouTube. I'll be live 30 minutes before the market open. It is just going to be pre-market prep from now on. I am not going to be doing a bunch of live trading here for you guys because, as you saw probably over the last few hours, without gatekeeping, I throw all the juice every day. I don't hold back. I don't hold fucking patterns back. I don't... I'm very transparent with everything I'm doing. Um... So anyways, man, I'm glad you guys joined me today. Hopefully you got something from this. Hopefully you'll spend some time over the weekend looking over your body of work and realizing that you're probably doing the same shit everyone else is doing and that's why you're probably spinning in a circle. Um, if you guys ever need anything, man, reach out to me. Roland Wolf 86 on IG. Roland Wolf 86 on Twitter. Roland Wolf 86 here on YouTube. TikTok is... Uh, Stock trading professor, I think, or stock trading wizard or something like that. I don't know how that came about, but but if you have any questions, uh, my email, Roland at RW Trades. If you have any questions about anything, you can also message Tanner at RW Trades. He's the man. He's my he's my man, uh, my right hand man. So you can go through him as well. If you guys ever need anything, fucking reach out, man. And if even if it means you're not don't want to be my student, but you have a question or I can point you in the right direction. Or if you have a question about someone or something, I will not ever publicly talk shit about anyone particularly. Um, because at the end of the day, I can still come up with an opinion on someone and they may be legit. I can't prove one way or the other. I can just form my own opinions and I keep those to myself specifically on specific people. Okay. Unless you want to talk to me personally, I don't lie to you guys or I won't sugarcoat shit or I won't point you in a shitty direction if you get in touch with me, at least what I believe to be a shitty direction. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for joining. Uh, we'll catch you guys Monday. We'll catch some of you guys in the pack. Rest of my pack people, we're getting to one-on-ones right now. I'll catch you guys for Power Hour Prep webinar in two and a half hours. All right? Love you all. Stay safe. Let's fucking go.